it's a term for a, a, a person that can repair a clock and make a clock and fix time. So I've always sort of been sort of, sort of very curious about how things work, so I'd always open up things and try to, you know, and when I was younger I wasn't able to put them back together. It's very easy to take something apart, but putting it back together is the hard part. But I like figuring out how things work, and you know, and my dad, I would just come into the shop with him and watch him work, and he would just start, you know, showing me the different things, and I just like the how it's sort of very, you know, it's always something a little different, you know, where it's it's never the same problem twice, or it's never. Sometimes it's, the, the repair is simple, but like this clock, it was made by, you know, it's all these pieces were made by hand by somebody like 200 years ago, and they, they figured out, oh, I want to do it like this, and there's even been some repairs after this clock was made that by somebody, another clock maker, and so it's 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 interesting that you get into somebody else's mindset of how they wanted this to work, and then you're fixing it and trying to pay homage to how they wanted to work and keeping it the same. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of contemplation where you think about something. And it's, it's sort of relaxing as well, where it's, it's sort of a very calming you know, profession. So it's not, you're not really rushed. He's just very sort of relaxed too. I mean, I guess I have a lot of his his traits in the fact that you know, like he wouldn't really say, "Okay, oh, this is how you do it." And so he would just kind of do it, and I'd watch him. And he's like, "Okay, there it is." And then you know, I mean, rather than somebody saying, "Okay, this is this. This is a pincher. This is a hammer. This is a screwdriver. You take this off and you do it like that." Like he had his own sort of ebb and flow and he would just do it and so so I would watch him and then I would try to emulate what he was doing and then so it was good I and mean, we had a good sort of working relationship where it what didn't feel like being taught as much as learning. How do you find parts for something? have to make them, you know, the clocks is old, you can't really find, there's no, you know, shop, uh, you to repair what's there, or you, uh, you know, rebuild it. And how long does it take to fix something like that? Uh, it's hard to, to say exactly, because like you work on it a little bit, you know, so I'll work on this for a couple of, uh, an hour or so and then put it, you know, and let it run and then go back to it another half hour and then let it run and make some, some minor adjustments to it. So usually clocks are in here for about, you know, three to four weeks before they're all, cause if, and it's supposed to run for a week as well, so you want it to, you want to make sure that it, it's, you know, run the week without any problems after it's all, you know, that's when it's being sort of under observation, you have it, and if it runs that week, then it's, it's ready. The main tools are sort of a screwdriver, a tweezers, hemostats, like a needle nose pliers, and a bigger screwdriver, and then here you have a lot of sort of, some, you know, sometimes you got to brush stuff off, you need a toothbrush, and these dental picks kind of help you maneuver things around. That's just this, this is a pivot locator, Oops, so you can okay. Okay. pivot locator, you can move the wheels and the gears around, and you know, really you're just getting everything back into place.
and files, you need to make a new tooth or, you know, whatever you can, whatever you can get your hands up, you can use to fix glass. So you always got to be listening too, especially what I'm doing is, is I need to make sure they're all kind of doing what they're supposed to be doing when they're doing it. Like children. Right. It's like when they're not, when you don't hear them, that's the problem. <laughs> you gotta make sure that they're, you can hear them in the background. They're doing something. And when they're quiet, then, like, oh, the sounds are off. Folks, just, the clocks are all sort of like guests, you know, so they come and they go, and sometimes they'll come back, or, but, so you don't really get, well, I don't really get that you know, attached, because I know they're just, you know, they just have it's like a short stay. You know, you're, you're passing through and the way to get better and serve more, you know, it's a more time where they're gonna go back to. But uh, I, I do like my favorite concert, it's an like American old sort of you know, workhorse kind of class. You know, as work, it doesn't really seem like work. Like I actually enjoy coming here to the shop and, you know, being in the shop and hearing the clocks tick and just like having all these different time pieces from, you know, around the world, all over the world, and all over New York at least, and figuring out, you know, really what makes them tick, right? <laughs> That's the whole thing. And just and figure out how to make them tick and get them back on track. And just, so it's, a, it's a relaxing thing to do. And also you have a, people bring clocks in they have a very personal relationship with their clock, and so they're like, you know, they leave their clock and they tr trust their clock to us. It's not just like, oh, I don't know, it seems like it's more, if you had a radio, it wouldn't be as, <laughs> as like, oh, particularly like people come and they like pet the clock and go, okay, I'll see you later. And, you know, it seems like they have a very personal, some people have a personal relationship and they kind of entrust us to make their clock better, and it's, it's so I don't take lightly. Like I want, I feel bad. Like some clocks, it's, it's, uh, you know, you can't fix everything, and I, you know, some clocks I have for months trying to get it right and trying to just fix it, and, and you know, I take it very seriously and take it very personally as well. That I, you know, I'm not happy when a clock leaves here and it's not 100 percent. Times where it, to me, I, I consider it analog, where it's just like you know, some clocks run fast, some clocks run slow, and that's just the ebb and flow. Like you know, time's been around for a while. Well, it's been around forever, but we've been you know mapping time with clocks for a while, and up until recently, you know, now you can have a really precise clock, which is like a, an atomic clock, something like that. But even that, they have to make adjustments to right, like every leap year, right, you have an additional day, right, and so that's a big gap, right, so instead it's going to give you an extra day, and so that's how off it is that you can't actually figure out to be pretty precise, so you don't need to be, you know, and you, you need to be close to the right time, and that's good enough for me, you know, some people are like, I need to be, like, have all these digital watches and stuff like that, but, I don't know, for me, it's close is good. Like my clocks at home are always a little faster, a little slow. How many do you have? Uh, I used to have quite a few, but now I sort of have three. It's just there's less people sort of appreciate the, well not really appreciate, but less people that have clocks that they want to get them fixed. And they, I think with now it's, everything's so disposable that people will have something that's broken, instead of getting it repaired, they just throw it out. So when you say disposable, does that also fit into the philosophy that some people feel like time is disposable? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure people, because you see people waste a lot of time, and, you know, and, and it's, it's really, uh, to me, a, a very precious commodity, because it's like, 
you, you can't buy it. You know what I mean? So it's not something that you can say, oh, I'll get more time later. You, you, know, you only know how much time you have. And once it's gone, you can never get it back. So you really should appreciate or try to do the best you can with what you're doing in that time. That you shouldn't waste it. You know, you shouldn't waste time. Kind of cool little piece of New York that I'm directly related to. And like I don't look at it as a sad thing moving and going to a new spot as much as it's just the next stage of this happening. You know, things always, New York is always changing, and for someone to say that this is going to be a fixture here forever. It's, it, it can't be, you know, because New York is not that static, you know. New York has always been changing. 